Hey everyone, Phil from 3DP UK Tech Channel. Today we have the Elegoo Vector 20 watt laser and we are going to be adding this supplied box from Geeks at Large, which is all the limit switches. Now, anyone who has this machine will know that this doesn't come as standard and the whole community doesn't understand why. They have all the actual connections on the motherboard, so for the sake of some really cheap wiring and some limit switches, this should really have been done as standard. And with limit switches, this can really, really improve you know, the overall use of this in terms of using it on Lightburn. So I've ordered this kit from Geeks at Large. Um, I purchased mine through the Etsy store because I'm based in the UK. Um, it's worldwide supplied, so um, I think I paid about £30 for the unit itself and about £20 for the courier charges being over in the UK and the import charges. So we're gonna have a quick look inside. So in the box, there's a number of different items. So the first one will be all the switches. Now you do have a choice of what color printing you want it done in. I chose black just because cosmetically it will look the same as the actual unit itself. And in here you'll get a number of items for the X and Y. So you'll have two switches for the Y and two switches for the X. And each of those have a unique, unique position on the actual vector laser itself. So as you can see, we have this switch here. Now I've got the instructions manual up on my computer at the moment and it's probably a good thing to actually sort of match these up. It doesn't come with the actual instructions in box. so take that into consideration to have something to your right hand side or to your left hand side have it available to actually refer to now each of these have a specific location so there's another switch there and then we've got the two longer switches now these ones have a slightly longer connection and they will have a, a position that they need to be in so as you can see I've chosen the black so we'll put that to one side over here and they are all the limit switches. Um, next out of the box, we have the two sets of cables. We have, and they're clearly marked as well. Um, the only thing I would say, it would have been really good to have these wires maybe shrouded so that you haven't got so much to sort of move about, but that's probably gonna be helpful when we actually go to install in this. And as you can see, you've got the connections and it says X on it, which is really, really good. And on the other one, we have the Y, which is also clearly marked, as you can see. And then inside the box, we have a little bag of cable tidies. So I am gonna use these for now, but I might actually use some conduit um, you can get some fairly, uh, really thin conduit and just run it along the side and it, it'll just look, it'll look cosmetically better. And also you'll find some various um, screws in there. These are gonna replace some of the ones that you're gonna be changing on there. So what else we have a, we also have a sticker from Geeks at Large. So um, if you so wish, you could put it on here just to say you know a thank you to this person who's created this. Um, now you can make these up yourself, um, it wouldn't be too difficult, but the fact that this person supplies it, geeksatlarge.com, it, you know, if you don't want to choose to do that, or if you don't have a 3D printer, that would be the best option. So thank you for that short sort of introduction as to what you get in the box. Uh, we're going to start installing it now on the Fector laser. So over to that part. So what we're gonna to need to do is actually turn the Fector laser over. I have disconnected all of the power to it because you really don't wanna be turning over the laser sort of pointing up towards yourself. I've put everything to the right hand side. I've got my list of what should be there, which we've gone through in the unboxing part. And then we're just gonna clearly mark out where everything's gonna go and actually put the switches next to that location. It's kind of how I work normally, which is to have everything as needed so there's no confusion, you don't connect something somewhere where it shouldn't be. Everything that we need to do is gonna be upside down, so we're gonna flip the laser over now. 
Okay, so we flipped it over. Now on the paperwork, it actually says to have the motherboard up in the top right hand corner, but I'm gonna have it at this end. And the reason for that is I wanna zoom in on the motherboard now and just show you where the two connections for the X and Y are, that you don't need to do any modifications to the board itself, it's ready to go. And I'm just gonna quickly zoom in on that. Yeah, so location for the X and Y is, so you've got the screen cable here, which is connecting the screen, and then you've got the X and Y, which is these two ports here. They are clearly marked, as you can see, just here and there. So everything in terms of the board is ready to go, so nice and easy. It's basically connecting up all of the limit switches which we've got, and um, it clearly says where they all go. You have two that fit on the gantry part of this, and then you've got ones that fit on each of these corners. So yeah, um, we'll do that now and we'll do one by one. Okay, so what we wanna do is fit the front Y limit, which is the longer um, 3D printed part. So, and that's gonna be up this end. So if I just spin this round, and then we can always work underneath the camera so you guys can see what it is we're doing. Okay, with the front Y splitter, um, we kind of want it to be facing this way. So obviously when the, the gantry moves forward, this is actually activated by this part here. Um, so what we need to do is remove these two bolts here. You're not gonna use them again and you get two new bolts which are connected, which is the M4 10 mils, and then they will replace it and that will fit in there. You probably just have to slightly move that over a little bit, but it is gonna fit in that position. So that's what we're gonna do now. Okay, so now we put the Y front, we're gonna do the Y um, rear now. So, that's over this side, just over here. So I'm gonna spin that round. So over here is where the rear is gonna go. So the front one's there and the rear one's here, and that's gonna engage with this part here. So it's the shorter of the two, as you can see. Take off the bolts like before, and they've supplied the new ones. And as this pushes, it will connect onto that. And it's as simple as that. So that's what we're gonna do now, take out those two screws. Okay, so that's the Y front and the, sorry, the Y front and the Y rear connected. So now we're gonna go onto the, the actual laser gantry and that's where we're gonna fit the two X's. Now this is slightly more complicated and I've seen a lot of other users that have built this using these partic this particular package on the Vector and they've had a few issues. So with some of the learnings from that and some of the instructions, hopefully we'll be able to do that as well. So on to that next step. Okay, so now we're gonna be fitting the, um, uh, it is the right X limit switch. So it's gonna, what we need to do is remove these two bolts on the flame sensor. Now this is staying it was exactly the same position and we're gonna use exactly the same screws. Um, it doesn't say anything about replacing those particular ones, which is good. And then this limit switch is gonna fit on here now we shouldn't need to add the cable in, we should be able to access that. But on the other side, I think there's slightly more uh, restrictions So we're gonna need to add the cable first. So what we're gonna do now is add this onto the flame sensor. So over to that bit. Okay, so I've connected the right X limit switch and now we're gonna do the other side, which is the left X limit switch. Uh, slightly more difficult on that side. Okay, so the left X limit switch is going to fit in here and there's a groove here as you can see, just here, and you basically fit this limit switch which I've already put in there, it slides into this little box here and you remove this screw here and you use the supplied screw. So what we're going to do now is just take away this one, uh, let's make sure we've got the right Allen key. Uh, there's a number of different Allen keys you're gonna need to use. So just make sure that you're using the right one. Okay, so I've removed this screw here. You don't need that one anymore, so just discard that. And then you wanna slide this right up like so. 
and then your limit switch is going to sit in here and that's going to be triggered by when this moves up this end and you'll hear it click just that little click there and then when it moves up the other end it's clacked, clacked, clicking on that so we're going to secure that in place with this supplied screw like so There we go. Okay, so that limit switch is in. And then what we wanna do is actually connect up all the cables now. Now this is where you wanna double check everything and make sure that you've got everything in the right position. And then that obviously the connection of the cables is your last thing. Now what I should have done was actually connected the cable on that one. So what off screen, I'll remove this bolt and connect up that cable. Obviously that's the difficult part. Um, yeah, and then we'll go on to the next step. Okay, a quick word from today's video sponsor, PCBWay.com. As you can see from the website, it's really easy to use. They have an instant quote system. They do uh, PC board prototyping, PCB assembly, rigid flex. Um, they also do 3D printing services and CNC services. So if you click on each of those different sections, they will take you into like a quote system where you can select exactly your requirements. They deliver worldwide and they have instant payments. They're, they're well respected within the um, prototyping community. And that's pcbway.com, today's video sponsor. Thank you to pcbway.com. So I connected up the cable and what you want to do is make sure that the X cable um, you, you use the furthest point because obviously that's going to be the last point and then it's going to go over to this side and connect into the other side and then into the main board over at the other end at the front. So how I'm going to do this is actually cut these cable ties on here and route this along here. It seems to be that this would be the most likely area for it to get caught. The other option is you could potentially um, cable tie it to these bits here, just so that it's nice and tidy, which is probably what I, what I might actually do, is just put it up onto this acrylic, um, and that's what I'm gonna do now. Okay, right, so everything has been installed now. Um, all the limit switches are in place. So we have a limit switch just on the inside there that you can see on the X. And then there's one right next to the flame sensor. You can probably just about see it just beyond the pipe here. And then down the back, we have a sensor or limit switch there. And we have one at the front, which is just there. Now the cable management, I've managed to sort of make sure that everything's kind of looks all right. Now on this side, it does drape a little bit because obviously this is fixed to this part here. So this is a moving piece. So um, it kind of, if you're not careful, um, this can sort of get caught up and pull out. Now, during the actual installation, I had a serious amount of trouble with this particular one here, which is the X near the flame sensor. Now, the first issue I had was I over tightened the actual switch itself. Now this is made of PLA, so there's not a lot of, it's not very forgiving when you tighten it up. Now, thankfully the supplier has sent me a new switch. So for, for the time being, I've actually hot glued it onto the flame sensor so I could pull it away. And the other found, thing I found, which was an issue, was that there's um, two cables going into each um, port of the actual um, connector, the power connector. So you got two black, two yellow, two red. Now the issue with that I found was that as soon as I pushed the actual connector into the limit switch, one of the wires popped out. Now it's, up to, it's taken me the best part of a few days just to try and work out how to fit that back in. I had to reconnect and buy some reconnectors. This is just unfortunate really, but potentially there could be a way around that. It could be just unfortunate for me, but that's something to be careful with. When you're putting that wire into this switch, take a bit more time, don't pull it in, make sure um, 
my other suggestion actually for all of the limit switches apart from I'd say from sort of this one at the front of the machine that's not so bad but this one actually on the um, carriage itself connect up that first before putting it on because I think that was half of my issue was I connected up the switch and then pushed the wire in and there was a little bit of tension I guess it got caught up on something and it pulled the wire out so that caused me a little bit of grief now um yeah overall hopefully it's going to do the job so in a minute i'm just going to run a test through light burn make sure it homes to this front corner now i've done all of the settings through light burn so you go into edit and then light burn machine um or machine settings and then after that you change some settings so you've got all of the information on the instructions manual and then it should home to the front and then that should make the projects a lot easier as we've said before not really sure why they didn't do that before but um let me check that now and make sure it homes to the front okay what we're going to do now is just move this away from the position that it's currently in as you can see i'm moving it sort of right out of the way and then what we're going to do is go back to light burn and then we're going to click on home and then you'll see that now this should go back to its home position which it, for me is this bottom right corner or the front left front right sorry and you hear the limit switches engage and uh, on the screen you'll get home success so yeah like I say wasn't the easiest of fittings. I know it says about 20 minutes, um, but once you have a few issues, it kind of throws everything off time anyway. Now, the issue that I had was obviously the flame sensor one. So like I said before, which is in there on this carriage, take care with that because the wiring is a little bit off. Um, something that might need to be put, improved in the future because obviously it is very sensitive. And if it's a build, build a uh, built kit sorry rather than build your own i really shouldn't have to have too much interaction with trying to put things back together unless i'm heavy-handed which let's be honest these hands and fingers are a little bit cumbersome overall um that's the geeks uh so here you get a little sticker geeks at large.com this is where you can pick up the vector limit switch kit now i'm based in the uk so i had to pay a considerable amount for delivery but the actual price of the unit itself is about 30 pounds in uk money so not bad at all elegu next time if you've got the space on the board use it okay thanks everyone that's phil from 3dp uk tech channel and we've got loads more videos coming out soon of various different projects and uh, check, don't forget to like and subscribe and check those out take care everyone phil from 3dp uk